If you were to pick only a single supplement to take for the rest of your life outside of essential nutrients and vitamins, what criteria would you have to choose it? Well, you'd want that supplement to be incredibly well researched and has the most studies. You'd probably also want one that's completely safe across the board and you'd want to probably also have it contribute to multiple factors like muscle gain, fat loss, athletic performance, and even things for overall health and longevity like benefits to your brain, your heart, your liver. In everything we research here at Rehash, looking at all things health, fitness, and longevity, there is one undeniable and completely uncontested king of supplements, and that is creatine. I used to be fairly neutral about it, and maybe you can take it, but you don't have to. But with the recent studies across both sports and nutrition journals, this is the one supplement that I think regardless of your goal, whether you're just trying to build muscle, lose weight, or generally live longer, you should probably be taking it. So in this video, we're going to cover the science and research behind creatine, the benefits, the downsides, how to take it safely, along with the most common myths floating around on the internet. All the studies will be cited in the show notes on our website, rehashfitness.com. My name is Joe Guevara, and I analyze the science and research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. I'm incredibly excited to kick off this series and this video sponsored by my longtime personal supplement source, Canadian Protein. I'm pretty particular about the quality and authenticity of the supplements I take since there's a lot of fake or low quality supplements out there. And after a lot of research, they're the highest quality supplement vendor I've found. They're third party lab tested across all of their products and they sell in bulk. So you get amazing value for the quality. You can learn more about them at the end of the video or in the description below. And with that, let's talk creatine. So what is creatine? Well, creatine comes from the Greek word kreas, meaning meat, primarily because meat is the best natural source of dietary creatine. It's a complex protein in your body made of three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine, that technically your body can make on its own, but never in enough amounts for optimal benefits. So how does it work? Well, let's talk biology. Creatine is involved in the regeneration of ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy storage molecule. This is what either glucose or ketones turn into in order to provide cells energy. When cells do need energy, the molecule is then converted to adenosine diphosphate or monophosphate, where the triphosphate gives off one or two phosphates, which is the final chemical form of energy your cells can actually use alongside water and oxygen. Now, when you ingest or make creatine, it's stored in cells in the form of creatine phosphate where it acts like an extra battery pack ready to give back a phosphate to adenosine diphosphate to turn it back into ATP, giving the molecule an extra life. So when your cells need a quick burst of power, creatine swoops in, giving your cells that extra spark to keep going. This happens not just in your muscles, but all your cells, including your brain and nerves as well. So what does this actually mean functionally speaking to your body? Well, this is where the established science made it great for lifters, but new science is making it great for virtually everyone else. First of all, the reason creatine is so well studied is that much of the research has been funded through sports and nutrition labs to improve performance of elite athletes like sports teams or Olympians. So as you can imagine, most people take creatine primarily for working out, which makes sense given what it does. Because of its ability to shuttle and recycle energy quickly in your cells, the primary benefit of creatine is an improvement in strength during resistance exercise. Who wouldn't want an extra battery pack in their muscles to push out the, just that one extra rep in your PR? That being said, there are diminishing returns like with any supplement. The highest effects were found in three studies in 2017 and 2021 in older adults with a meta-analysis across 721 participants between 57 and 70 years old, finding that subjects who supplemented creatine and trained up to a year significantly increased lean tissue and strength compared to those on a placebo. This effect was also seen in those who don't eat a lot of dietary creatine, which usually means people who don't eat meat. That being said, even people who do eat meat still get a good benefit across a wide range of factors. Studies show that it modestly increases lean mass, it reduces your body fat, and it increases your strength, like how many reps you can do in a given set. So if you're doing any resistance exercise, supplementing with creatine, in my opinion, is a no-brainer. One caveat is that the research primarily shows benefits only in resistance or anaerobic exercise, and not aerobic exercise, like cardio or long distance running. For those trying to lose weight, supplementing with creatine alongside resistance exercise 
naturally increases your basal metabolic rate more than resistance exercise by itself. It simply amplifies the effect of weight loss and increased metabolism that you would find when you build muscle naturally. This does require you to do effective resistance exercise, so don't think you can just take creatine while sitting on the couch and magically lose weight. Now, while it has benefits in weightlifting and weight loss, more and more research has started coming out as athletes have been finding better overall health outcomes while on creatine. And with recent research, there's an argument to be made that given how cheap it is and its likely benefits outside of strength, that everyone who wants to live healthier and longer should supplement with it all the time like a vitamin. For example, there have been four different studies from 2018 up to as recently as March this year in 2023, looking at how creatine improves cognitive and mental health. Studies in 2021 and 22 in the Journal of Nutrients have shown that creatine has a potential to reduce mental fatigue, especially in highly stressful situations involving sleep deprivation and exercising all the way to exhaustion. So if you're generally in a stressful situation or environment, creatine might actually be helpful there as well. In the same studies, creatine was also seen to benefit memory, but like in the studies in resistance exercise, the largest effect was only seen in people who have below average creatine levels, like vegans, vegetarians, and older adults. Lastly, there are also some initial signs, according to studies on mental health disorders like depression, that creatine might reduce those symptoms as well. The study goes on to state, there is growing evidence from human neuroimaging, genetics, epidemiology, and animal studies that disruptions in the brain energy production, storage, and utilization are implicated in the development and maintenance of depression. Creatine, a widely available nutritional supplement, has the potential to improve these disruptions in some patients, and early clinical trials indicate that they may have efficacy as an antidepressant agent. So with so much potential upside, there's got to be downsides, right? Well, there are two main downsides shown in the literature. The first is that supplementation with creatine typically results in weight gain due to an increase in water retention studied as far back as 2003. From no supplementation to fully loaded, you can expect to gain anywhere from two to four pounds in water according to studies in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition and Sports Medicine. So if you're an athlete competing in weigh-in sports like boxing or martial arts, definitely keep this in mind for your weigh-in. And likewise, if you're trying to lose fat, don't get discouraged with the numbers on the scale. In fact, the water retention from creatine is intracellular, so if anything, you might actually see a bit more muscle definition instead of looking generally bloated as a result. The second downside are potential digestive issues. If you do a loading phase, and I'll get to this in our next section on how to take creatine properly, a study back in 2008 in the Journal of Sports Medicine noted that you might get diarrhea, stomach upset, discomfort with dosages at or above 20 grams in a single dose. I'll expand on this in that section. And lastly, there is one obscure risk factor to consider that I found that only happened in one subject related to this. There was one case across 12 different studies of analyzed where a 20 year old suffered acute renal failure when taking 20 grams a day of creatine for four weeks straight. Now, as background, normal loading time is typically maximum one week at the 20 gram dose. This is not overly relevant in my opinion for most people since not only did he take way too much for too long, he also already had a history of kidney disease. So in all likelihood, the excess creatine in addition to the super high loading volume was likely the biggest factor in the renal failure, but it's worth noting nonetheless. So all in all, there are very few downsides and especially none related to long-term health effects. Next up, we'll talk about how to take and use creatine for maximum effect. First, buying creatine. When you go to buy creatine, you'll probably see different kinds besides the standard creatine monohydrate. Buffered creatine, crealkaline, ethyl ester, citrate, HCL, and more. So how do you choose? Well, as it happens, a systematic review in 2021 in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning asked exactly this and had this answer, and I quote, there were no consistent findings of performance enhancement among alternative forms of creatine when compared to a placebo. A review of the marketplace shows that creatine monohydrate is the lowest cost form of creatine. 
due to the paucity of studies on alternative forms of creatine, as well as the high prices in the market of these alternative forms, creatine monohydrate remains as the most extensively studied form of creatine that shows efficacy, safety, and the lowest cost to the consumer. So TLDR, most other forms of creatine in current literature are just marketing gimmicks that probably are just there to charge you more money. Since creatine monohydrate is so cheap though, but it's also a highly purified form of protein, I personally only buy it from third-party lab tested sources, which is why I partnered with the sponsor of this video, Canadian Protein. On top of all of their products being third-party lab tested to ensure the highest quality, they also sell wholesale like Costco, so they're great value as well. Not to mention they have free shipping to both Canada and the US, so you know you're getting the best deal compared to random supplements you're gonna find at local retailers. Rehash Fitness subscribers will also get 15% off on your first purchase if you use this link. So check them out and their selection, especially their protein and creatine, which I'll also pop into the description below. Now that you have that big bag of Canadian protein and creatine monohydrate, that's a mouthful, how do you actually take it? Most people who have taken creatine have probably heard of the loading phase. This means that when you first start taking it, you're going to take a higher dose initially, usually 20 grams, up front, which can accelerate the amount of creatine your muscles have to experience your performance gains that much more quickly. Now, whether or not you want to do this is completely up to you. You're going to get the results faster, sure, but you're also potentially risking the one negative downside we talked about earlier, which is potentially stomach issues or distress if you're taking a lot in a single dose. Now, anecdotally, personally, I did do a loading phase and didn't experience any of these stomach issues myself, so your mileage may vary, but it's also probably dependent on your diet. Whether you load or not, a normal dose of five grams of creatine daily will make sure your muscles stay loaded. If you work out three to four times a week consistently, you still have benefits if you only take it during your workouts. There are also studies that show that taking it with something that spikes insulin, like protein or sugar, is beneficial to get a stronger effect since both insulin and mTOR triggers proteins like creatine to be shuttled into your muscles more effectively. Personally, I found that mixing it with your protein shake is usually the most convenient and most effective approach, and it's what I do myself. However, given the benefits outside of weightlifting, I've personally started taking it daily, regardless if I work out or not, primarily for optimal health and longevity benefits like brain effects like we talked about. In this case, I would typically just shake it up with water. Creatine is completely tasteless when I eat my meal as well. And that's it. Let us know in the comments below what your experience is with creatine. Do you think you're a non-responder or has it dramatically helped your workouts? Drop us a line and let us know if you have any questions down in the comments below. Now, if you like diving into this kind of science-backed content and the actual studies, we've officially launched our beta resource website and community at rehashfitness.com, where we'll be posting show notes, resources, and more across everything we talk about on this channel absolutely free or through a completely optional donation. This also serves as a community forum if you want to share or discuss different studies that you find, your own experiences, and more. So if that interests you, head on over to rehashfitness.com and sign up for access and come say hi. Otherwise, if you've watched this far and enjoyed the content, again, please do like and subscribe since it helps us immensely. I primarily post here on YouTube and all social media at Rehash Fitness. Again, my name is Joe Guevara, and with that, I hope you all stay curious, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you all in the next one.